Welcome to Blind Spots, a podcast where we're helping you fill the gap between what you want to do with your money and what you actually do. We are professional investors, writers, and financial planners helping you navigate the complexities of finance to optimize what you can control and cut out the rest. Join your host, Nick Shermans and Aaron Varghese, as we discuss the questions and nuances surrounding everyday money management. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Blind Spots. In this episode of Blind Spots, we are going to be discussing the silent killer of retirement plans. So, Nick, why don't you tell us what that silent killer can be? The silent killer of retirement plans is retirees off the cuff gifting or loaning a large sum of money to their adult kids. And look, I'm a father of three. I get it. There's a natural instinct, a parental instinct to want to help. And you can help. But randomly gifting large sums of money is one of the biggest derails that we see. And oftentimes, folks don't even recognize that they're doing it. They they just do it. And then they go back and say, either don't tell us or we're forced to model it like what they did and make it work within the context of the plan. So we're gonna give you a framework on how you can help and also make sure your plan is set up for success. Yeah, so we've seen this in a few different real world examples recently, and it's not just large gifting um, or loans of money to kids, but it's also ongoing support and Sometimes that comes up in monthly support. Sometimes that comes up in kids asking for money on an ongoing basis. And you think it's the last time, but maybe it's not. So I think it's an important discussion and and we see it more prevalent recently than we have before maybe. Yeah. And, and this is important because it's, it's one of those things where if you can account for it, if you can model it, then it tends to work best. If you have a a upfront expectation conversation about what this is, is it a loan? Is it a gift? Is it going to last for a year or a month? All of these conversations are great to have upfront, so there's no surprises. But most importantly, before you even write that first check or make that first bank transfer, make sure that you account for that within the context of your financial plan. Back to my opening comments, we see a lot of folks just go ahead and do this because they want to help their kid. Maybe their child is in trouble. Maybe they just had a recent setback and they want to get them back on their feet and they go ahead and do it. And then they have a moment of like, oh, well, I didn't really model this, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll share uh, what I did with my advisor and they'll just make it work. That is not optimal, right? With any dis- any financial decision, we always encourage clients to run it in the context of your plan. Because if you think about it, you're, let's say you're 65, right? Your future earning power is greatly diminished. We talk a lot about finding your enough. And that's just the number that you're content with that allows you to, to meet all your retirement goals, to supplement your lifestyle, to create your dream retirement. And then let's look at the other generation, your kids, right? They, they have their whole lives ahead of them, even if they're adult kids, they have human capital on their side, meaning if things go bad, if they, ha- if they suffer a setback, they have their whole life to potentially make that up with their future earning power. So you need to balance those two things. And ideally, you would take care of yourself first, model how you could help your kids in the context of your financial plan to come up with a solution that can help your kids, but also keep you on the rails. Yeah, I think what you said there is really important is helping yourself first. And we've said this on the podcast, and I think it's a silly expression, but oxygen mask finances, helping yourself before you help others. But that's one of the biggest things, like we said, is is a silent killer to retirement plans is the positive intent that you have by helping your kids can sometimes be the biggest pitfall to your retirement plan at the end of the day. So Well, and let's talk about what this is not. This is not intentional gifting, right? So the, a lot of folks that are high net worth are bumping up against mostly state death tax or estate taxes. Mm -hmm. So they're intentionally trying to reduce the value of their estate. One way of doing that is gifting while they're still alive. And each state has a different limit. The feds have a limit. I'm not a financial planner. Aaron could probably rattle off these facts, but 
it's not uncommon for clients to gift $10,000 or $15,000 a year to each child or grandchild to help reduce their uh, taxable estate. This is all very intentional planning. That's not what we're talking about here. We are talking about one-off, two-off, three-off gifts that come in the form of, hey, help me invest in this business, help me with the down payment on a house, help me pay off my credit card debt. You know, again, these things are fine, but make sure you understand the impact of doing this one year or maybe it's consecutive years and how that could potentially impact your financial plan. Because as we've recently seen, 2022 was a difficult year. A lot of folks got hit with market losses. They're taking funds out of their portfolio. You stack up a higher tax bill, let's say. You stack up a gift to your child. All of a sudden, you can impair your capital base where it doesn't support you for the rest of your life. That, mm -hmm. That's a pretty gross feeling, and it could all be avoided through a candid conversation with your adult kids and modeling all of these things in your financial plan before you make a decision. Yeah, I think an important note that you said was that it can be a positive thing you know, once you have determined that that gift does not put you at risk for running out of money, the questions that you ask yourself are different. And we've done this with a client recently where they wanted to gift some of money to their child. And after we went through the process, you know, they came to us first, can I do this? Is this feasible? Then the question is, well, how much do you feel comfortable giving is, you know, where do family dynamics play in this? Do you have other kids that you know, is there jealousy issues? Is there resentment issues? Things like that, because those are very real things that happen. You know, do you want to see your kids use these funds while you're alive? Because that oftentimes will bring a lot of joy to parents is seeing their kids use the wealth that they've built while they're while they are still alive. Or would you prefer them to just receive that in the form of an inheritance at the end of your life? So there's some questions that once you find out if the gift really works in your financial plan kind of helps you sift through the rest of it to make that ultimate decision. Also, I don't want to understate the human side because there is a real human side and most parents mm -hmm. want the best for their kids. Like I said, I'm a father of three. One of my kids came to me and I was able, even if it put me in dire straits, I, I probably would do everything I could to help them out. So, so we're not saying that you shouldn't gift to your kids or you shouldn't help your kids out, but I think there could be a mutually beneficial solution and a order of operation in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, I know money and investing, money and family, money and gifting can be highly emotional. Mon money and children is certainly emotional. And like everything else that we do at Pure Portfolios, whether you're talking about our investment process, our financial planning process, we always bring people back to the evidence. We bring people back to the data because we don't want emotion or family dynamic or a panic situation to influence what, again, could derail uh, their well-thought-out plan. Yeah, when we've talked about this before, because we've kind of bounced ideas off each other and off of the team, I remember you saying, you know, if my kids are doing well, they have a good job and they come to me and say, Hey, I need help with X that, you know, it makes sense. You feel good about helping them because you know that they are trying on their end to help <laughs> themselves, but it's really difficult to see kids who aren't helping themselves and continuing to ask for money. So I think it can be a learning lesson. It can be a lesson for our clients and their kids at the same time. Um, you know, to evaluate the situation that they're in and give them the the next steps to best set them up for the rest of their life and not just a quick Band-Aid fix. Well, and Erin's very nice. And what she's saying, there's some kids out there, some adult kids out there, and I hate, like, using adult and kid is oxymoron. There's some adults yeah. out there that have no intention of bettering their lives, that are intentionally trying to deceive or milk their parents. And we've mm -hmm. seen this over the course of my career. We've seen it at Pure Portfolios. It's deeply uncomfortable because these are sensitive issues. But in that case, a difficult conversation needs to be had. And that really over that's kind of overstepping our role. Like we can give people financial advice. We can give them tools to make good, good decisions. But where the rubber meets the road and where real change gets made is potentially a difficult conversation. And again, that kid parent dynamic, I keep saying kid, adult person parent dynamic can be very sensitive.
Mm -hmm. And we wanted to tread lightly on this conversation. Um, you know, everyone's situation is different. Everyone's family dynamics are different. So take it with a grain of salt, but it's uh, something that we've seen pop up a lot recently. And so we felt like it was worth the time to talk about it. Yeah. So put, so to put a bow on this, make sure there's a clear, candid, open conversation about what this is. Is it a one-time thing? Is it a loan? Are, are you going to pay me back in a year or 10 years? It, it, is this a gift? That's, that's part one. The second part is modeling this in your financial plan before you give your adult person, adult child an answer. Okay. And once you have all the information, it could even make your plan look awful. But as long as you followed a process, I think you could have peace of mind that you're making the correct decision. Because again, no one can say what's best for you, what's best for your family, what's, what's best for your kids. And if you feel good about it, then by all means, but you need to have a process in place, expectations in place so no one gets hurt. Well said. If this is a conversation that you have been having or you have other questions, you can always reach out to us at insight at pureportfolios.com and we will see you in the next one.